Hello again. This is uh, Washington Red Bear. Uh, I have some several projects that I'm working on on my workbench. Uh, at the thrift store, I found some camo pants that have a string in the bottom of them. I'm going to have my wife cut them at some point and make some stuff sags, sacks for my uh, hammock gear. Uh, this morning, I did some, uh, put some um, eyelets, uh, what do they call them? grommets in my under quilt uh, on one side of it I had it tied to my lines going through the under quilt but on the other side there were no straps and I noticed the last time I hung on it that they came in and was forming an air gap underneath and so I bought these grommets the other day at work and uh, put those in this morning and tied those up so I've got that taken care of uh, just several little projects that I'm working here um, but one that I'm working on right now that I wanted to show everybody is taking a magnesium rod. I, I don't like the way they're set up. Uh, to me, you're just looking for a point of failure. And when you're out in the woods and depending on the weather, you're not going to have the time to be able to scrape uh, the ferrosium rod or the magnesium rod with the uh, hacksaw blade that they send with it. Uh, I took my grandsons out one day and I, they wanted to do something so I said well let's make fire. I have them a little kit, uh, a little fire kit that I have in their backpacks that we take whenever we hike and so I wanted to show them how to do fire. Well I sat there and I took the, the hacksaw blade and I scraped and scraped and scraped and scraped and scraped. Got just a little bit of uh, magnesium into a little tinder pile that I had and when I went to strike it I hit the wood and it just scattered everything all over the place. And so I went inside, got a piece of tin foil, made a little bed, uh, scraped the magnesium into that, and then went to strike it and it went everywhere again. And I found something out, and I don't have one on me, but if you were to strike it with your knife, uh, always have a tendency to hold magnesium and strike it. And what you end up doing is just hitting your, your tinder pile and knocking everything. And I saw on a YouTube video, to where you hold your magnesium and with your knife and you pull the magnesium backwards and that way you're not striking into your your tinder pile but you're pulling it back but you're still forming the sparks and I still have a tendency of doing it the opposite way so I've got to get used to doing it this way but then I saw another YouTube video and the guy said why spend all your time doing trying to scrape magnesium off in the field do it here in your shop, put it in a container, and then when you go out into the field, all you got to do is take the magnesium out of here and spread it in, and you, it's already set up. It's just like a Vaseline uh, cotton ball. You don't take the Vaseline and the cotton ball and do it all up there. You do it at home. So why not do the same thing here? Nothing states you've got to take it into the field and scrape it. And it's like, duh, that's what I'm doing. So what I've done is I've got an old cheap... Uh, magnesium rod that I bought at Harbor Freight and I've tried scraping it with the hacksaw blade and that didn't really work. I had a file that's got half circles in it. Uh, tried using that and that didn't really work. So last night um, I bought another uh, file that will work. It is a cobalt uh, 8 inch woodcraft file and you're not going to really be able to see it on the video, but it has like scales uh, all the way up the file, uh, real sharp pointed scales. Uh, and that's all they show, say here is just a woodcraft file. Um, but it's, it's got the handle on it and everything, but it's just a real aggressive, like uh, the scales of a snake or, or something like that is kind of what they look like, but they're, they're, the points are up and real sharp. Uh, I don't have a vice out yet. We just moved. Uh, they're still packed, but I did have a large C clamp and I've taken the magnesium bar and put it in the C clamp and then I'm just taking this file and just kind of turning it side to side as I scrape it so I keep a good even surface and just doing it this way for several minutes to get a pile of magnesium off and then
get it off of the C clamp as best I can. I'll get a little brush here in a minute. And then I'm using the hacksaw blade. And I don't know if you can see that right there. Uh, there's a good hefty pile of magnesium already to go. I don't have to try to do it. And then I've just been putting it into this uh, bottle here that's got a top on it. Using again the hacksaw blade to scoop it up. And put it into here. And then I'll put this into my fire kit. In fact, I'll probably divide it up into a couple of my fire kits. And then I'm ready to go. I don't have to worry about getting out in the field and trying to scrape it. I don't have to worry about trying to deal with it if the wind's blowing. I don't have to deal with it if it's raining, snowing, whatever. I'm already set. I'll get a little tinder pile, maybe some uh, dryer lint that I carry. I'll sprinkle this into the dryer lint or if I, uh, and then just spark that. It'll flare, flare up really good Then put my tinder on it. But I'm ready to rock and roll. I don't have to do it in the field. So anyway, this is just a little short video uh, showing another way of doing things. Uh, like I said, I had not thought of it uh, until I saw it in that one video. And I don't know who it was. So I can't give credit to them. Um, and I'm sorry about that. But it was a great idea. Sometimes get landlocked in my brain and don't think of things the way I should be doing. And you get tunnel vision. And so uh, this is just another way of doing it. Um, and it's coming out very good with this new file. And I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you very much.